Welcome to Watermark's Church Leadership Podcast, a conversation with church leaders for church leaders. I'm your host, John McGee. Thanks so much for joining us today. Well, hey friends, it's just me in the podcast studio today, and I wanna share with you one secret, one goal, one thing you must do. And if you do this, it is going to change everything in your life. Well, I was just trying to sound like a salesman, like some of the emails and uh, some of the social media posts that I got. I don't know if you got them at the beginning of the year. And they were talking about goals that I should have and ways I could uh, have my best life this year. And they were modeling some of the things that they were doing. And I'm recording this on January 15th which means that the second Friday of the month is when everybody historically gives up on their New Year's resolutions was January 13th. So we're two days past when everyone set goals and has already given up on them. And I want to talk to you. I was thinking about who it was that sent me uh, those emails, that sent me those uh, offers to buy courses. And they really oftentimes were one of three people. So the first group of people that showed up in my inbox were uh, the influencers. And this really is, it's honestly, it's part of their job. It's to, to be interesting. And they had really interesting goals and really interesting things they were trying to take on this year because really, honestly, mundane goals are not that interesting. So not a value statement. That's just, that's just their job was to be interesting. And they, they showed up in my feeds and in my inboxes and, it, and in some ways were beginning to shape me. So the second was the professional content creators. It's their job to create content that first you consume and and kind of build a relationship with them. And then they'll tell you what it is about your life that's less than and how if you buy their course, they can make it better. And that sounds a little bit cynical, but that's how how sales works. And and I've actually bought courses. I've actually bought books. And a lot of times they're, they're really, really helpful. But that is really their job. It's their job to create content that you buy and they have to have an interesting spin that needs to be some kind of value proposition that really, really makes you get excited. And then the third group that showed up in my inbox and probably did yours as well, and this is a little bit more on the social media front, was people who sit on top of very large organizations. So I'm thinking about the person who started a company in Silicon Valley and now they sit on top of that, or the person who started a church, it's, it's now a giant mega church, they have two, three, four, five hundred 500 people on staff. And so they've worked very, very hard. And now there really is a very small list of things that they must do. If it's a pastor, he should probably preach at a fairly consistent cadence. He probably should lead some meetings and things like that. Now, he can be busy all day long if he wants to, but those are the things that he has to do, which gives him a little bit more time to blog and to uh, write uh, things, make videos, those kinds of things, and tell you about some of the uh, the goals that he's setting uh, this year. So all of it can be really good, uh, but some of it can be a little bit outlandish and a little bit different you know, than, uh, than where uh, many people who listen to this podcast live. And I was thinking about the kind of person that didn't show up in my inbox, that didn't have an offer for me, that didn't have a, a course to buy, that didn't have a list of, of 10 things that they were doing that were incredible and really inspiring. And it's represented in an email that I received a a few years ago. And so I had read an article, I can't remember if I shared this on the podcast before, but I I read an article that a son had written about his dad. His dad was a pastor. He was really, really faithful. And he talked about uh, his incredible love for this congregation, how good he was as a pastor and how he really wasn't trying to level up, go take on a bigger church, go take some role within the denomination. He was just trying to shepherd uh, this group of people. And one of the things he said and there was that he had, his dad had an email list. And so I went to the to the church to try to see where it was, see if I could sign up for it. And I couldn't. So I just you know, thought I'd just send him an email. And so I sent this pastor an email and I said, hey, it was really amazing to see what your son had, had written about you. Uh, I was inspired and, and challenged personally, I said some other things about him. And then, and then said, hey, by the way, could I get on that email list? Looked for it, couldn't find it. And I got the best response back. I, I loved this response. He responded back and he was, you know, really kind and he said, thanks, thanks, you know, for this encouragement and he had said some other things. And then he said, in short, no, you can't be on my email list. This email list that I have is actually for the people that that I shepherd and that are in our church. And so I've decided that I want to write just for them. And I want to, I want to be able to say what I want to say to them. I don't want it to be nuanced in any kind of way that it, you know, in case it got out, but these are my people. This is really what I feel like, uh, God has called me to do is to shepherd these people. And so uh, I really appreciate you as an honor that you would ask. Um, but in short, no, you can't be on my email list. And he, he, he clipped one. He said, just so you can see, you know, what it is that I, that I do. And there's nothing magical. And he, he sent me 
sent it to me just so I could see and just and just thanked me. And I just thought I mean, that that was the that was the response I wish I'd gotten more often. And that's the the kind of man that I wanted to be. But but when it came to setting goals, when it came to achievements, he didn't he didn't send me an email. And I couldn't really be shaped by him because I didn't have his tweets or his emails. He's just a, a faithful man who's loving the people that are in front of him without really any any fanfare. And I wasn't able to be shaped by him as I set my goals. Now, I think goals are, they can obviously be helpful. I've got some goals across some different areas in my life this year that will probably help me accomplish more than I than I would otherwise. And I will set some deadlines uh, on some projects. I just, I know that about myself. You know that about yourself. If you do those kinds of things, you will probably get more done or get it done sooner and at least help you prioritize of things that are uh, most important. But I guess what I'd want to say is uh, you just don't need to be defined by your goals. And whether you complete them or not, whether they're outlandish or mundane, you don't need to somehow stress out or feel less than if early in January you've already given up on them. And I think part of the problem is that when we think about goals, we think about them probably in a very unbiblical way. There's a very self-focused way that we're thinking about goals these days. And I was thinking about the Apostle Paul and did he have goals? Well, We don't have tweets from Paul that uh, every year he gave us his top 10 goals for the year, things he was trying to accomplish, but we've got a lot of breadcrumbs in the the epistles, and he did have ambition. We we know that, but his ambition uh, was to preach Christ, specifically to uh, the Gentiles, those who didn't, didn't know God, hadn't heard God. And was he disciplined? Did he have disciplines? Absolutely he was. And that was actually one of the things he admonished young Timothy with, he, he, told Timothy to discipline himself, but the purpose was for godliness. He told Timothy he should have discipline, but in that physical discipline actually had some value, but ultimately he was to discipline himself uh, for godliness. And Paul wanted to know some things or some things he wanted to learn, some things he wanted to know more about, but what it was at the end of the day was Philippians 3.10. Paul said, I want to know Christ. And the power of the resurrection and sharing in his sufferings and becoming like him into his death. That the thing that I want, that Paul wanted to know, um, that we should want to know, is Christ. And we can learn a lot of new skills, a lot of interesting things this year. But ultimately, the thing we should want to know the most about is Christ. And then when you think about accomplishments or things at the end of Paul's life that he reflected back on, it's really, really interesting in 2 Timothy 4, 7. All he says is, I've fought a good fight. I've finished the race and I've kept the faith. He's reflecting back on his life. He doesn't rattle off all that he's done. He just said, at the end of the day, you know what? I was faithful. I was simply faithful. And so none of it was, uh, and Paul's life was about outlandish goals or life plans, living his best life now. It was just simply about being faithful. And and friends, there's just so much power in simply having the goal of being faithful this year. My family and I were sitting on a beach a few weeks ago. It was New Year's Eve. And so I've got four children, my wife, uh, daughter-in-law now. So there were seven of us sitting around a fire on a beach. We were reflecting back uh, on this year. We're thinking about uh, all the ways God showed up and just some fun memories or kind of our our favorite memories. We would spend some time doing that. And then I asked the question, who is it in your life that has marked you? Who's had the biggest impact in your life. And we just kind of took some time one by one by one going around the fire, sharing about that person, what it was that they did, how they impacted us. And, and it was a really, really meaningful moment. And then at the end of that, I just said, well, you know, let's don't talk behind their back. Let's all text them and, and basically tell them or thank them for the things that we just shared with each other as a family. And so, uh, so we did that, but here, here's the thing. If I rattled off the seven names that had impacted the seven people in my family, including me, you would not have heard of a single one of them. They don't have courses. uh, They don't have big social media followings. They are just simply faithful people that somewhere along the way made it a goal to invest and to show up, to teach, to encourage the people in my family that I'm so crazy about. And I'm so grateful that they did. And so for us, a lot of times we want to set goals because we want to have impact, uh, because we want to have influence. And, and friends, I would tell you, I think the best way to do that is to simply be faithful. So if you want to set some crazy goals this year, that's great. Read 100 books and uh, make sure you can see your abs this time next year. Become a scratch golfer, run a 100-mile race, get good at social media, whatever. But I just want to remind you on the other side of eternity, that type of stuff won't matter nearly as much uh, as a life of faithfulness. 
So be very, very careful what and who you are shaped by. Don't beat yourself up and create goals, I think, that are of eternal significance. Because what we want to do is hear as the faithful servant did uh, in Matthew 5, when his, his master looked at him and he said, well done, good and faithful servant. What Jesus is going to reward is faithful servants, not accomplished servants, not goal crushing servants, but faithful servants. And so friends, if you've been faithful the last 12 months, I just, I want to let you know, uh, you're like that pastor that, that no one's ever heard of. I just, I hold you in such high regard. And I'm so grateful for the, the work that you're doing, the ways you're investing in other people and, and pouring out your life on this side of eternity for a reward that will come later. And uh, as you think about goals, I, I hope you have some that are, that are fun, but more than anything, friends, I hope you think about a life of faithfulness, a, a next 12 months of being faithful. And I pray as we record this, that the Lord would find all of us faithful above all else, above whatever goals we accomplish or not, we would be found faithful. And that's the thing uh, above all else that we would, uh, we would strive to be. So friends, as always, thank you for all that you're doing. If we can help you in any way, if you have ideas for future episodes, or if you have any questions, you can always reach us at clp at watermark.org. That's clp at watermark.org. We'll talk to you again next time. 